another Sugar Ray production. Yo, what's going on, people, man? This is Sugar Ray from Sugar Ray Production. CEO, founder, filmmaker, writer, director. Everything, man. I'm just trying to get it done. You know what I mean? We're here with a special guest today with an exclusive interview. Mr. Trevor Watson. Some of you heard of him. Some of you haven't. He's here. What's How you good, doing, brother? Man. It's a pleasure to have you. Pleasure you to have too. you here in my home. So, um, give the people a little rundown on who Trevor Watson is. Talk to the camera. Trevor. Trevor Watson, um, I was born Darnell Haynes. A lot of y'all, y'all, you know, personally, y'all know me as Darnell Haynes. It's my birth name. Um, Trevor Watson is a singer, actor, dancer, choreographer, um, a model, well, former model. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, I've been, you know, I've been doing my thing for 15 years strong. 15 years strong, under 21. So you know, I've been doing my thing since I was a I mean, a little, a little taller. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. A beautiful thing. So, um, tell the people how you got started in this dancing thing. That's what you started first. Yeah. Give the people um my little info on dancing. Exactly. <laughs> I started um, dancing. I, I I used to always dance around the house when I was a little kid. Okay. I used to always watch Michael Jackson, Prince, Nicholas Brothers, Eleanor Powell. You know, um, Gene Kelly. Those and um, um, Mikhail Baryshnikov, those, those people, um, they 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 had a big and big impact on me. To this day, they still do. I still, you know, I'm still influenced by them. And I used to always watch the tapes and you know the musicals. You know the musicals would come on T T C M or T M C and you know all those channels. And I would always watch those tapes when I was a little boy. And um, I had a friend when I was like five, six years old. I had a friend who was going to this dance school in Brooklyn called April's Dancing Feet. Mm -hmm. And um, her and her mother was like, you know, why don't you take, She told, they told my mother, you know, why don't you take, you know, Darnell to dance class, you know, with April's Dancing Feet. You know, April, you know, she's danced with a lot of, a lot of the great dancers. She danced with Gregory Hines, mm -hmm. you know, the Nicholas Brothers, mm -hmm. Lena Horne, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this would be a perfect, perfect dance school for you to go to. And my mother was like, all right. And, uh, and um, so I went there, First day I went there, actually, um, I remember it, it, I was I was dancing and I was freestyling and I was you know picking up everything like at once, and I remember I was I did a little freestyle and and I did a little spin, and I remember she she had um, she said stop stop wait do that again, and I think I did like eight nine spins in a row and she had called her mother Rose she was like Rose, you know come come and look at this little boy and I did it again she was like how do you do wow. all the spins. And you never had training. I was like, I don't know, Michael Jackson and Eleanor Powell. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just always watching him. So she was like, you know, we're definitely gonna, we're definitely gonna do something big with you. So uh, she had actually put me in um, Attitude magazine okay. when I was six years old. Okay. And um, in the '90s, and just got me a manager. Started everything for me. Definitely. And it started everything. You know, um, she started everything for me. Uh, when I was six years old, so I really gotta gotta give a big shout out to April Scandariato. So well, that's uh, a beautiful thing, man. yeah, beautiful man. Thing. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't even be here. Uh, are you still in contact with her? Definitely still in contact definitely. with her. I talk to her all the time, and and that uh, she still has a um her dance school, a franchise now. So okay. she has like four dance schools now. Okay. So okay. um so she's she's doing it. Big. I can imagine she's pretty proud of you. Yeah, yeah, she's 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 pretty proud of me. Definitely, <laughs> she, definitely, definitely. Uh, that's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Um, so um, let me ask you this: From I know you started when you were young. How old are you now? Twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Now you started when you were six. That's a long time. Yeah. Is there any? Was there any point from the starting that for any reason that you felt like quitting? Not quitting because it wasn't working. Maybe quitting because it was something else you wanted to do, like um, sports or anything else. Was there anything else you wanted to do, or was well, dancing always it? And, uh, entertaining is always what I wanted to do. That that that's been that's the only thing I know. And um, it, it it had it, it did get a little trying at times uh, when I was young, it's particularly in my well, not only my dance school, but everybody. I used to have a lot of um, a lot of jealousy, and I didn't understand why. Uh, you know, I used to me and my dance teacher. She would always call me up for TV shows and 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 Broadway shows and stuff like that. And um, looking back, I noticed that a lot of the other dancers didn't get those calls or 
did you get uh -huh. those auditions? So, um, I did have a lot of jealousy, and I did have a lot of, you know, people, you know, threatening me, you know, mm. threatening my mother, you know, don't, you know, don't come into our auditions and stuff like that. And I, and I never understood why. And I remember when I, um, it was about ten or eleven. April had sat me down, and she was like, you know, they don't, they, they're, they're mad at you because you're better than them. And I was like, what? And because <laughs> I was only like ten, eleven, and she was like. They're mad at you because you know you're better than them. you have a gift, and just realize that your gift is from God, and don't stop what you're doing. Because if you stop, you know they then they have won. So from that point on, I got a you know I got a real, real um big strong, strong head on my shoulders, and and realize that you know it's not something that I could quit, or I could let somebody take from me. So. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, she really, she really definitely. helped me with that. So, um, I know you said you also sing, you act. How did those, how, how did those two things come about? Because I mean, most, most people they, they dance, they get into the acting thing, yeah. but some are not successful at it. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, how did they work for you? How, how did it come about singing and becoming an actor? Well, well, um, you know, being Broadway, you, when you're on theater, you have to do everything. You have to do, you have to be a triple threat: sing, act, and dance. So, you know, when I was on Broadway, I was, I was really always singing and acting anywhere. Um, I, I, I decided to take up singing and acting professionally because I was so, it, it was so natural to me. And, and, you know, I would always go on, on uh, my mother used to send me on a lot of acting schools and acting classes. And, you know, I said, you know, why don't I take all the information that I've learned for all these years and, you know, full throttle with it, with this one too. Instead of, you know, just dancing, I could be a triple threat. Definitely. And um, so I started going on a lot of acting auditions and then when I was around 12, 13, and I said, you know, I was gonna completely, you know, go forward with my acting career and my singing career after around 12 or 13 years old. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, when you started, right, and then looking, Looking forward from when you started, mm -hmm. you know I, mean? I know you look forward like, okay, this is where I want to be when I right. get older, this is where I want to be. Are you comfortable? Are you at your standards? Like right now what you're doing in your career, where you're at, are you comfortable? Or do you feel that you could have done better in the time that has been, in the time that has passed? Well, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable and I'm content. Uh, I'm never satisfied. I'm never satisfied. And looking back, I um, actually I was going to, I actually was going to, take some time off. I took some time off when I was around 13 or 14 because I, it was a lot of things happening. You know, I was doing school at the same time and, you know, traveling, you know, touring, you know, doing a lot of things. And um, physically, it was it was a lot for me too. Um, it was taking a toll on me physically and, and I started getting like injuries and, and then I got this big injury when I was around f 15. This this back thing and I had like spinal surgery mm. so and um that's when I you know took some time off and decided you know let me take a little break and um you know I, I mean everything you know worked out fine I was dancing after three months after my surgery it was beautiful so you know I was you know doing head spins and, and hollows you know three months after and, you know my, my doctor looks at me like the miracle kid now it's beautiful man it's a blessing in itself yeah man it really it really is so that that's that's probably the only time where i, I wish i could have not really taken a break and probably go on probably went on a little further a little bit okay. but uh, i'm glad I, I took a little break and took a little time off because um you know just just to come and, and to rest and reflect and to, to realize what I have accomplished and what I could accomplish. Definitely. So, you know, um, during that time, you know, I, I'm, I don't regret taking a break around that time. Now, please, people, go and watch part two.